Hello my Sock Universe, after showing you the jerseys in my collection for each of the two Euro 2024 finalists of which you can find the links in the videos either here or in the description below, let's preview this final proper. It is actually quite an interesting one between Spain and England. One who was more or less an outsider ahead of this tournament but has proven to be the most attractive and best and most likely best team at this tournament in Spain. And the other being a pre-tournament favorite, the one that everyone thought, yeah, they might actually do it. They have the class to do and they're mostly disappointed throughout the tournament. So I find this very, very intriguing. And we still would think that Spain are the overwhelming favorite if England would have given us a little glimpse in the semi-final against the Netherlands of what they could do. So in this video, I want to preview this final as I do for every big club competition final and I've done also for the World Cup. I want to look at the venue, refereeing, jersey matchup. I want to look at each team's path to the final, then look at the teams, how they compare with each other. And in the end, I give you what my model thinks, who will win this final and also what I think and where my sympathies lie for this final as well. So let's dive right in. The final will be of course played in Berlin. It is the capital of Germany, the biggest German speaking city and not even by a close margin. The next three are relatively close together in Vienna, Hamburg and Munich. But Berlin is I think twice as big as Vienna. So this is one of the big European capitals. And it's unfortunately a capital I have not been to yet. I actually would like to visit, but we know all the sites and it's very checkered history, you know, being first the uh, capital of the Prussian Empire, then it became the German Empire. Then of course it became the capital of the Third Reich with a lot of architecture there. Then it became the divided city. So in a way its history actually prevented it from being at the same level as we would say a Paris, London or so on, but it's still considered one of the big capitals in Europe, that's for sure. It lies on the River Spray. Of course, the big sites are the Brandenburg Gate, the TV Tower, if you like, Checkpoint Charlie, then the government quarter with the Reichstag and, and so on. You have the Spray Island where there are many famous museums on there. Definitely a city worth visiting and also one that has very varied neighborhoods as well. Of course, the site of the final will be the Olympiastadion, who you could consider the German Wembley in a way, with the exception of the German national team doesn't regularly play there. However, it is a site of the German Cup final every year. Hertha is playing in there for the Champions League. It was also only on Berlin because their stadium was too small. So it is the biggest venue at these Euros and also one of the biggest venues in Germany. Yes, if standing room is allowed, the Westfalenstadion in Dortmund is bigger, but in general, it's the Olympiastadion. It is also one that has a running track, which might be a downer, but the Olympiastadion, of course, is also one of the most historic stadiums. It was built for the 1936 Olympics. In more modern times, the stadium has been renovated for the 2006 World Cup, where it, of course, hosted the final, a very famous final, where Italy actually beat France to become world champions for the fourth time. It will always be the headbutt final. Sidan's final game. We don't have anything like this in that final. I have to say it also hosted the Champions League final in 2015 where Barcelona beat Juventus 3-1 and it also hosted the opening game for the 2011 Women's World Cup. It's a very well-known stadium I would say with the characteristically horseshoe shaped roof you know the marathon gate where it's open which also makes it a little bit weird when the, uh, the away section is usually divided which I'm not sure it's good for the atmosphere. You definitely see this during the German Cup finals. The referee for the final is François Le Texier, the youngest referee to ever referee a Euro final. He takes the record from Anders Frisk, who refereed the Euro 2000 final. He also refereed three games already at these Euros. It was uh, two group stage games, one between Croatia and Albania, and also one between Denmark and Serbia. So the groups of Spain and England, he also refereed uh, Spain in their round of 16 match against Georgia. I have heard from many former referees, they really liked him, what he was doing. And despite French referees not having the best reputation. He seems to be like a really good appointment for that, despite Spain having beaten France in the semi-final, which is something that UEFA usually likes to avoid, but you know, referees should be seen 
as a neutral position. Other than that, there's not much I can tell you. I mean, he was the referee for the Super Cup final in the past season. He was the fourth referee for the Champions League final, but he's young, so there's not much there. But he was probably the best referee at this year so far, although he didn't have any high profile games. Now he gets the highest profile game and I really hope there is no controversy surrounding this final. Now when it comes to the jersey matchup, it's very easy and I already have it sorta of confirmed. It will be Spain in their home jersey and home kit, you know, red, blue, red and England will also wear their home jersey. However, this time with white pants, which of course is understandable since we want to avoid a pants clash. Nothing weird like at the Women's World Cup final where those two met and then England suddenly played in their away jersey. We won't have anything like that, we'll look all very good and as we would expect. Although I slightly wonder, would Spain look cool in white pants in that one? Maybe not. Maybe all white England is a little bit more traditional than Spain with white pants. And speaking of Spain, let's look at their path to the final. They actually played already in Berlin once. Their opener against Croatia, where they for the first time in a long time did not have the majority of possession. However, they ended up beating Croatia very comfortably already in the first half, 3-0. This was the first exclamation point. They were even more impressive against Italy, where they only won through a Calafiori own goal, but this could have been five or six. They also then played against Albania, where they rested almost all their squad. Every player except the third string goalkeeper got minutes of this Spain squad. However, it was all back then when they played against Georgia in the round of 16. And then they had a big one. Two really tough opponents in Germany in a great quarterfinal in Stuttgart, where they beat Germany with a last minute header by Lenormand deep in stoppage time. This was the closest challenge to Spain. France actually had the lead, but in the end, Spain in the semifinal won very convincingly and without trouble, I would argue. So Spain over quite a convincing route to the final, beating some really high rank opponents with Croatia, Italy, Germany and France. And yes, in between, it got a little bit easier. But you know, Georgia was a nice team to watch at this Euros and also Albania, I would say. I also want to point out that they were sent more or less all over Germany. We started in Berlin, then we went to the Ruhr Rhine region, so Nordrhein-Westfalen, NRW, with Gelsenkirchen, Düsseldorf and Köln, and then southern Germany, Stuttgart and München, where they were actually based. They were based in southwestern Germany, where the Danube starts, and then moving back up now to Berlin. So Spain traveled actually quite a bit. As for England, things were not as convincing results wise. But before we go into these results, I first want to point out if we look just at the venues, how classed together all these were. I mean, England played almost all their games in Nordrhein-Westfalen. Gelsenkirchen twice, we had Dortmund once and then you played in Köln and you played in Düsseldorf, which are also close to get in the near vicinity. And then the only venue outside of Nordrhein-Westfalen was Frankfurt, which is also not too far away, for instance, from Cologne. So England travel-wise had it actually quite comfy, I would say. This is the longest trip now going to Berlin. That is remarkable. A remarkable though is not a word that I would use to describe the England campaign. A very lackluster win against Serbia with an early Bellingham goal, but then not much there. Against Denmark, they again took the lead, fell back. Denmark actually were pushing a side that never should give England trouble. Against Slovenia, a paltry nil-nil draw. Slovakia, they were almost eliminated. It took a Bellingham overhead kick to get them to overtime. And there Kane scored in the first minute. Everything but convincing. Even to the degree that I even thought that Switzerland have a shot and Switzerland took the lead in the second half. They were better than England. Another lackluster performance. However, Saka scores five minutes after Switzerland took, took the lead and then the win on penalties. Something that this England team can now do under Southgate because Southgate, to his credit, he might be technically and selection wise not the greatest coach. However, I have to say the one thing Southgate does is he looks at things and tries to not do the traditional way. And that is something I really like about him. England gave us a glimpse of what they can show in the first half against the Dutch, where they again went down a goal. So the comeback quality of this England team is something I would worry about if I was Spain. But then, you know, they always let an opponent hang about which is something that Spain usually did not do all that much. In the end, it's again a late goal that wins it for England. But I have to say against the Netherlands, this was the one game where they really were convincing and they fully deserved the win. And the one game that gives us a little hope, a little glimmer of a hope that they might actually be a really worthy opponent to the Spain team. Because just squad wise, England have a much better selection of players. If you would make a combined 11, 
I would argue there would be seven, if not eight, England players and only three Spanish players in there. Maybe four. Let's compare these two teams and what really sticks out that this is similar to the last Euro final where England, because of home field advantage, were the favorites. That Spain overall have a lot more credibility on the world stage. Both have won one World Cup. However, Spain did some more recently. Spain is much better in the Euros. They've won it three times, England zero. Also, including this tournament, both teams reached the top four six versus four times. Then Spain have won a Nations League. They were in another Nations League final. England made only a third place. So, and I use the Nations League here as an active tournament. We could have also used the Confederations Cup where Spain also reached twice the final finishing one third, finishing one second. So, you know, Spain has a lot more clout than England. The only thing that England historically has going for them is that they invented that game. This is what England has going for them. And always this hope that, you know, we might return to a former glory. However, Spain were a team similar to what England is now, a team that was always promising, but never could quite get there. Well, in the late 2000s, they finally got it, they clicked, and since then, Spain is an absolute dominant force, although they had a little blip now after the glory years. Head to head, and this goes much back to the past, England leads with 14 wins versus 10 of Spain, three draws. The most recent meeting was actually the win with England won 3-2 in Spain in the Nations League. I think it was in 2018, where they then went on to the semi-final. The most recent meeting in a big tournament is actually quite a long time ago, 96 Wembley. It was a nil-nil. I think Spain were robbed by a goal and England won a penalty shootout. Yes, you know, there is history there as well. We all remember the picture of Pierce celebrating converting a penalty. I already said it, when it comes to pure market value and talent, England beats Spain. England has the much higher quality of players. However, Spain have the better team. I also find it quite curious that both coaches are federation coaches. They both were under 21 coaches of their federations because before they became appointed their managers. They all went through their superstar managers and then landed on Luis de la Fuente and Gareth Southgate respectively. And those two work quite well. Does this tell us something about how a national team should be run? Maybe. Maybe you need just a federation guy who has maybe some idea, maybe looks at things differently. Because it's a much different task. Although Nagelsmann for Germany has done well. Rangnick, of course, for Austria. But that just fits. Age-wise, very similar. England slightly younger if we look at the squad. Also interesting that England has only two players playing in a foreign league, which is, of course, Jude Bellingham at Real Madrid. And I probably should have used him for the thumbnail. And Harry Kane at Bayern Munich. So the two biggest stars, if you would like, play outside of England. The rest are all Premier League players. Where Spain, they have nine players that do not play in La Liga. So I also find this a very intriguing step. Before we talk about who are the favorites, there have been the thought that fatigue might play into it. And you know, statistically, the team that plays the semifinal first usually wins the final. So that's an interesting fact. We saw that the travel for Spain was more. However, Spain have also now one day more of rest. Could this play a factor? Also, Spain could rest the squad a little bit more. I personally don't want to put too much into these statistics. I think it will come down on the form of the day and how the teams are set up way more than how tired they are. And yes, England have played an overtime more than Spain and England always had to struggle more. On the other side, England played so much in first or second gear for most of the tournament that I cannot see fatigue really becoming a Factor. Now, before I give you my personal prediction and what the model says, where do my sympathies lie? Well, if I just look at it face value, who has been the better team? Spain. I think Spain would be a much more worthy winner of this tournament than England. England gave us one half. On the other side, I always said I probably would like to have the shirt of the winner of this tournament. If I compare the two shirts, I like the England shirt a whole lot better than the home jersey. I actually think it's a really nice one, whereas the Spain jersey is just, uh, you know, middle of the road Spain jersey. It does nothing exciting, but it's also not a bad jersey per se. So from that point of view, I'm more or less leaning England. I also have to say, for me, the just pure thought that Spain might win their fourth Euros and become then the record champions, it's a little bit of a tough pill to swallow. 
England winning it for once, I think this would be something different. Needless to say, at the moment, I feel rather neutral on this one. I have relationships with Spain. I have good friends in England as well. If you watched my England jersey video, you know that I have a bit of a weird relationship with England, but you know, it's getting much better. So I really don't know who to support. I will probably be relatively neutral in this one. The odds, my model, have Spain as a slight favorite. 52% to 48%. I think that sounds about right. I honestly think England will win it if they keep it tight. They can neutralize with their defense the Spanish attacking threat and they will win it by a slim margin. If Spain win it, I actually could see them running away with this one as well. I could see a 2-0 here. Not like the 4-0 that they did it against Italy, but Spain have the capability. Also, honestly, I think this will be a 2-1 win for Spain, but I'm not very convinced in that one. Any case, let me know where you think this final will go. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!